Well, good morning, and I suppose good afternoon as well. Uh, thanks very much for joining us for our webinar and demonstration of Click for XPPS invoicing. My name is Todd Shaven, and with me on the line is Doug Anderson. Um, we'd like to jump right in here and get going. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please uh, feel free to enter them into the chat window. Um, uh, Doug will be doing most of the demonstration, uh, and I'll sort of interject those questions as we go along. But um, let's get started. We just wanted to give you a quick overview here of our agenda. Um, Doug will introduce us to Click and give you a bit of a background on the history of the application. We're going to do a walkthrough of Click itself, and, and this will probably take the bulk of the time. We're going to show you uh, from stem to stern, from top to bottom, uh, how the application works, how it integrates with your data, and what we do to ultimately help reduce the amount of time that it takes you to manually input this data every single month and, and how we can help find errors and things like that. Then we'll circle back around, do a real quick demo of Click itself and show you how quick it is to, to process all this information. We'll talk a little bit about pricing, and then if there's any questions at the end of it, we'll, we'll do a Q&A. Um, as I said, we'll, we'll try and do this as dynamically as possible, and I'll interrupt Doug from time to time to ask him some questions. But uh, for now, that's our agenda, so let's get started. I'll turn this over to Doug. Well, thanks, Todd. Yeah, well, I've actually got Click open up on screen here. Before I do that, I'll, I'll give you a little uh, breakdown of the history and, and, and where it, uh, how it came to be. Uh, we had a, uh, a rather large uh, Xerox agent uh, here locally who uh, called up one day. We had a, a working relationship with them, and uh, they were uh, frustrated, to say the least. They were trying to grow this XPPS business, and um, they were struggling with the, with the billing aspect of it. Uh, they loved the program. They loved the concept behind it. Uh, they really thought it could, could really you know, improve their overall business and be a, a product that they could run with going forward. But at the time, they had oh, maybe a couple of hundred devices, and uh, they were spending three or four days just getting the invoicing out. And uh, for those of you who have experienced this, uh, that invoicing is challenging, but it's also um, sometimes uh, fraught with errors because you've got humans uh, trying to cut and paste data from Excel spreadsheets and uh, doing manual lookups and, uh, and uh, making decisions that, um, on those devices. And, and, and thinking, too, that you know, it took one customer a, a couple of days, and you remember we did a, a demo just a, a week or two ago, Doug, and we had one customer that took, it, I think it took her two and a half weeks. Yeah, that's right. She's down to start to finish. It was two and a half weeks. And, and I think a lot of that is because there's a lot of effort that goes into this. And so you do a bunch of work on it, and then maybe you take a break from it. And then you've got to go back and do more <laughs> yeah. um, because you can't complete this thing in a, in a, in a really uh, you know, quick amount of time. So, uh, you know, the, the, the agent that, that reached out to us, uh, you know, is, you know, someone who's got a bit of technology background and looked at it and said, look, this is an Excel spreadsheet. Can I just convert this into invoices? And, you know, the short answer is yes. Now, there's a little more complication to that, uh, but we uh, embarked on building uh, Click version one as a, as a product uh, just for them to, to leverage. And uh, we saw the, the, the benefit of this uh, that, uh, that they received and, and thought we could take this out to to more partners and, and and that stemmed that turned into click version two and and now we're actually on click version three uh and which is what you see ahead of you and and click version three is really a sum total of the experience uh from those first two versions and a lot of feedback from those who are who are currently using the product uh, every feature that's in here is is really driven by that uh that user group uh, and every feature that's been every feature that's been requested to date has either been added into the product or is on the list and will be in there, you know, within the next couple of months. So we we take these uh, recommendations and suggestions very seriously, and they drive out the product. Because if one uh, if one uh, reseller agent on the XPPS program is asking for a feature, likely everyone wants that feature. Yeah. Yeah, and it's important to note too that if 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 our customers and, and people that are listening to this and watching this, if they have an idea for a feature, whether you're a customer or not, or want to be a customer, please reach out to us. Shoot us an email, uh, just info at xppsinvoicing.com. We'd love to hear your feedback because that's how this is developed. This application was 
not developed initially and doesn't continue to be developed in a vacuum, right? We, we, we need the input from the user uh, feel from, from our customers. It's very true. So with that, what I'll do is, uh, is I'll walk through the application here, as, uh, as Todd mentioned, and, uh, and then we'll actually get into importing some actual data and doing a demo run. So um, just, sorry, Doug, one, one yeah. quick question that's come up. Um, Click itself, we're, we're looking at it on screen here. Is, is Click a web-based application or is it desktop? That's a great question. Yeah, it's actually a desktop application. And uh, although everything seems to be moving to the cloud, and in fact, what we'll demonstrate here is QuickBooks online integration, we purposefully decided to build this as a Windows desktop product um, for, uh, for a couple of key reasons. Um, the first and foremost being uh, that that gives us a level of performance uh, with the data and importing uh, importing that data. The other is security. Um, you know, this lets us uh, not have to go and, and, and deal with security at the same granular level that you might need to on uh, on on the web. Uh, and this is your customer data; it's financial data. We thought that that was, um, you know, for us was maybe a bit more uh, a, a bit better option on the desktop, but the most important reason for us uh, is actually that we can then connect to multiple um, uh, accounting applications. So in order to connect to say a QuickBooks a desktop application, that's very difficult to do from the cloud. Uh, so we built this as a desktop application to allow us that opportunity to connect to as many platforms as possible. Uh, the current version that we're showcasing today uh, supports QuickBooks desktop, QuickBooks online, and Sage 50, which is uh, the Sage desktop product. Uh, we'll soon have some Sage 1 support, uh, but if there are other desktop applications out there uh, or, or online applications, we're interested in hearing about those for potentially building out integration um, as, uh, as the need arises. Thanks. So yeah, on, on the, uh, the application's got four key tabs. Uh, I'll run through them quickly here. Uh, the import tab is purely that, it's where you import your, uh, your file. Uh, I've got a sample file in the background here. Uh, this is actually some, uh, some live data that was anonymized, so you're all familiar with seeing this, uh, this lovely file format and all the data that, uh, that arises from it. That's where we go ahead and import this. We haven't actually imported anything yet. This is a clean build, so uh, it says nothing, nothing here, I import some data. Next is the Devices tab. Again, there's no data in here. This is where we can go and add a device manually, or we can let the Xerox spreadsheet populate this for us. And this is where we maintain the cost per copy that we're charging our, uh, our client. This is where we you know, track things like base fees and handle all the other details about that. And, and when we import the data, you'll see, uh, you'll see that happen live. Next, we've got the invoice. And again, there's a common theme here. We've got a clean instance. So this is where we would see the, the runs that we can invoice, see the runs that we have invoiced, uh, and actually do that invoicing. <clears throat> so from a first three tabs perspective, you tend to start with import, import the new file you've got, update any of the devices that have either been uh, added because they're new on that file, or uh, alternatively make some updates because um, maybe pricing's changed for a client. And then finally, you hit the invoice tab and you invoice. Sort of the three-step process. There's a fourth tab, uh, which is our login configuration tab. And this is where you set up the configuration to the accounting platform you've got. So right now we're on QuickBooks Online, which I have selected. And the gear is just the setup pieces that are required for that. QuickBooks Online will actually launch a QuickBooks page where I'd key in my credentials and it would go and bind our application to QuickBooks Online. Uh, that's a one-time uh, one piece of configuration. Same with the other, um, the other accounting platforms. Got a configuration, uh, a couple of options here. One is the uh, Excel map itself. We are constantly updating the application, and so if, um, if Xerox does uh, change that Excel spreadsheet, we're obviously gonna hear about it, and uh, we'll make adjustments to the application to facilitate. But if uh, you're out of sync with, uh, with an update, you've chosen not to, to update the product, or um, you need to get a run out right now and, uh, the, and the Excel map has changed. This is where you can go and say column A is, you know, the Xerox serial number and column B is the manufacturer serial number. So you can manage that yourselves or you contact us and we, we walk you through it. Uh, for the most part, you'll never need to touch that button, but it's there uh, to, to help. Uh, the invoice layout, I'll just pull this one up here. This is something that, again, we configure for you or with you uh, during uh, implementation. And uh, this is where you define what the invoice is going to look like. Not the logos and the other details, because that's handled inside of your accounting application. 
from a template perspective, but this is what details are actually going to show up on those description lines. Uh, the first uh, section here is uh, invoices, uh, invoice layout for devices without any included clicks. So if you, um, it's a standard client, they, they pay $5 a month for an asset fee and then they pay, you know, X amount for black and white pages. This is the kind of uh, layout that we're going to see. There's another one for devices where you charge a base fee. So we have the ability uh, for you to say, oh, I charge my customer X number of dollars per month. And that includes, you know, a thousand monochrome uh, uh, pages and a hundred black and white pages or uh, sorry, your color pages. So that, that's, this defines what that, uh, what that layout looks like. These are just the variables that you can insert that you have access to uh, for the invoice description. And the last bit here, this is the really key piece, is um, ensuring that you wire us uh, the Click application up to your GL codes inside of the accounting platform. So right now, um, we're on QuickBooks Online. We've done very little configuration for this instance of QuickBooks. But if you had other revenue accounts, they would automatically appear in here. So if you had a asset fee um, line item or you had a, you know, black and white impressions, color uh, impressions, you go ahead and select those GL accounts uh, here. I'm just going to go simply select services for everything. Uh, so these will all end up as <coughs> service revenue uh, charges. We have the ability to select an invoice template if there are templates in the accounting system. Uh, there are no uh, uh, extra uh, templates as as associated here. Uh, we've also got the ability to either show this management fee or asset fee, and we're using the word ma management fee and asset fee kind of interchangeably here. Um, if you want to show this fee per device, then you select this checkbox. Otherwise, if you'd like them to show up as a summary at the bottom that there were 10 devices, um, you know, $50 for you know, the $5 asset fees, then, then that, uh, you can remove that checkbox there. Saves a little real estate on the invoice to remove maybe one line per, per device. And then there's show separators. We'll simply put uh, a set of dashes um, between devices to make the invoice a little easier to read. Um, you know, we recommend that, uh, you know, you work with us a little bit this, but you play a bit to get the invoice layout to, to look the way that you want it to look. Last section here is just um, uh, how do you want the uh, the terminology to appear on the invoice. So do you communicate with your customers in the terms of black and white, mono, monochrome? Um, you use EXP color or expressive color. Uh, this is just what wording we're actually going to put on whatever wherever we see BW as our internal um, uh, internal value. We're going to replace that and put mono uh, in place. So looks a little daunting here. One time configuration and um, uh, and away we go. And this is something that's important to note, I guess, Doug, or, or re-emphasize is that we do all this for the customer. Part of our onboarding process, as we call it, is taking their data, um, doing this integration with them, that this is a, a one-time, and it's also something that we're going we're gonna to do basically for you, with you. Uh, on, a, on, on the first time we set everything up, right? Yeah, definitely. And if you need help going forward because, uh, oh, you're not currently putting in uh, the, the, um, the date range where the, uh, where the counts were actually pulled and you want to add that in later, great. Give us a call. We'll walk you through how to do it. Uh, it's, uh, it's straightforward enough, and we've got some tutorial videos on how to handle each of these aspects, but we're also happy to, uh, to walk you through it um, live on the phone. Uh, we've got an annual reminder option. This was something that came directly from uh, one of the users of the product. said, look, every year uh, on the anniversary of the device, uh, I actually need to do an uplift. And that's part of my contract with Xerox, part of my contract with the customer. So we're actually in the process of adding in that feature. But right now, there's at least an ability to do a reminder. Uh, and um, enabling that will add a new column into the devices tab and flag devices where uh, you are uh, a month before this device's uh, anniversary, which will let you then go and maybe make that uh, that uplift uh, for the uh, cost per copy. And then there's some other uh, self-explanatory items. We've got uh, a series of reports that get generated that gives you access to that reports folder. You can back up the database at any time and, and restore the database. Uh, and um, then some administrative pieces here that we may access if we're doing a remote session and, and trying to um, understand what's going on in your system. And lastly, a quick button to email support. So if you need any, issue, any uh, help at all, simply click that button. It will not only send us uh, an email and you can give us a quick description as to what your question is, it'll also send us some logging detail. So we've got some information uh, beforehand if there's um, 
if you've got some you know queries or you find a bug because uh, that does happen so uh, last piece uh, uh, or the next piece here is to actually go and import some data so I'm going to go ahead and click on the uh, little ellipsis to go and pull up uh, our, our uh, select file for import option I'll go pick my small file here it's got 30 some devices in it um, go ahead and select the file and now I can give this file an ID and, and this is purely uh, a, a reference value for yourself if you're happy with the file name that that uh, that uh, Xerox provides or you've renamed the file that's fine I'm just going to call this you know Jan test and uh, go ahead and hit upload you can see here it's uploaded 36 rows of data that may not actually be 36 devices because as we're all aware sometimes serial numbers appear multiple times Clearly telling us that that's the number of rows it imported. <clears throat> but when we go to invoice, we're going to merge together, uh, you know, multiple uh, serial numbers and uh, and such. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and I can see this run. And if I had multiple runs, I could click on them, and I'd see all the data that we imported, uh, which is just basically all the data from that Excel spreadsheet. Uh, but what we're going to notice here when I go to devices is I now have 36 devices uh, that show up inside of the system. So in this case here, if I go and click on any one of these, I'm going to see the, the data that we've pulled in. So we've pulled in the Xerox serial number and the manufacturer's serial number. Now it's up to you to go and put in the asset fee and all the other details uh, that you want to associate with this unit. For convenience sake, we've shown you what the, what the name of the customer is on the last import um, that appears from Xerox. That's actually an interesting thing there. Because we're actually monitoring this value, uh, if you import uh, a new Excel file, and a device has been moved to a different customer. So in the Xerox file, the customer name is different than it was last month. We're actually going to flag that. We're going to tell you that this serial number appears to have been moved. And that gives you some indication that maybe you need to A, confirm that, but also in the system, associate that device with that uh, different customer. And we've certainly ha heard this happen before, where you go to do your invoicing, you know this serial number is attached to this client, what you forget to do is next month that device gets moved to some other client and you're actually billing the old client um, for pages on this other device and not billing the new client. So we've got a lot of validation in here, checks and balances, trying to catch some of those, uh, those pieces. So the key aspect here is, uh, is to go and, and enter some of these data values. So for fun, I'll just put in uh, some values here. And I'm going to go ahead and select my accounting customer name. So just like we saw with those GL codes, when we are connected to our accounting system, we're actively pulling a list of client names from there. So you can bind this device <clears throat> to that client. This client was actually this uh, Nullum. So I'll actually go down to N and I'll see if I can find one called Nullum in here. Uh, great. There it is. And I can select the accounting uh, tax code that's associated with this device. So this device might be exempt or GST or whatever the tax codes you have in your accounting system, we're going to populate here. So uh, this just happens to be the, the, the default layout that, um, uh, that we have inside of our uh, QuickBooks Online setting. I'm going to go ahead and select GST for this customer and click OK. Now, another set of validation has popped up. This is the first device we've ever added to the system. So of course, the values are going to not meet with the norms. So, but here's a quick, uh, quick example of what will happen. So my black and white value is greater than any other device in the database. Same with the color, same with the expressive color. We're going to warn you if, if you've entered a value that's greater than anything else or less than anything else as a, a quick help to prevent you from putting a dollar in instead of 10 cents. <clears throat> Click OK, and we can see this device has been updated. And it's also been verified. We know that this device has enough data uh, elements to actually invoice. If it was a color device and we had not entered a color, uh, color a value, we would warn you about that. And we'll showcase that quickly by what I'm going to do here is I will actually go and do a couple of devices. We'll select a few. And we have an ability to manage multiple devices at once. So maybe you've looked up one customer and you want to update all of, their, uh, all of their asset fees from $5 to $6. You could simply highlight uh, any number of the devices and click copy or clone the settings. What this will do is let us populate the data elements from any device, in this case, the first device that I've selected. It'll populate automatically with those details. 
what I can do is I can go and modify any of these and tell the system to copy those values to all the other devices. So in this case here, I'm gonna go ahead and copy the asset fee and the black and white fee, and even the customer name and the GST uh, value here to all those other devices. And it's gonna go ahead and populate those values. And what you see is not each device is actually verified. So I'll actually go and manually verify this device by clicking. And we'll see here that this device is a color device, so color value must be set. So I'm going to take each one of these that I know is a color device and I'll copy and clone them and I will go ahead and specify a color value and I'm going to copy that to all the devices and great, they're all verified now. And in the efforts of time here, I'm simply going to go ahead and assume that all these are part of uh, one other customer. I'll go and say five and we'll put the same values in and some of them might be color so we'll, we'll do that and I'll just pick the customer from here, uh, a tax amount, and click OK. And what we can quickly see is that I've got every device. In fact, you can sort on any of these fields so I can see that every device um, has been verified. And we've got data values in for the bulk of them. At this point, if I wanted to uh, go ahead and invoice, I'd simply click on the invoice tab. I'd go ahead and select which invoice run I want to, uh, which spreadsheet I want to invoice from and um, set the date that these invoices should be, uh, should be set to, should be uh, identified with, and click uh, the process. I'm gonna now see a quick um, report option that says here this invoice run contains two invoices and two device warnings. Do I wanna see this report? I, I do, before I go through, I'm gonna actually open this report up. So in Excel, I, I get a, a, a report here that shows me uh, first and foremost what the invoices are what, uh, how, many, um, how many devices we have on the invoice, total impressions. We've also got the total billable. We've also calculated what the Xerox charges were on those. So we could actually do a quick check to see what our profit margin is uh, for these units. We've also got the warnings tab, which shows me that these two devices have a warning. They have a counts warning. And a counts warning is that there are no billable impressions for this device. So that may tell you that the devices may be gone off XDA, uh, and you may want to take a look into that. I know it's not been off XDA too long because I don't see base greater. This is a different warning that'll tell me whether or not uh, that base fee uh, that's being charged from Xerox is greater than the asset fee or base fee that I'm charging my client. And this is a quick way to, to go and see those instances where a device has maybe been off XDA for long enough, Xerox is now charging you, um, uh, a base fee versus a, an asset uh, fee on that device, and you might need to go in and manually modify that invoice. So what you might do is you might simply take note of these clients and these serial numbers and go into the accounting system after the invoices have been pushed, go take a quick look at those, make sure everything looks great, make any minor modifications that you need to make, and uh, let the invoices go through. And Doug, that's probably a great example of demonstrating where not only is Click going to save you time, but it's going to find errors like this. If, if you don't have a base greater than, um, potentially the customer could be losing money on that device, correct? For sure. And we've seen this you know, and heard these stories before um, where you do your best to try to get those devices back on XDA. But by the time invoicing comes around, um, you've maybe forgotten about it uh, or it wasn't a priority right away. And, and now you're just charging your $5 asset fee and, and you're not billing for any pages because there's no page counts coming through. So we're trying to capture those. We're also trying to capture where there's a base credit because you may want to deal with that um, in your own manner. Uh, so we're not going to go and, um, and, and deal with that. We're not doing a percentage uplift on things like uh, the, the base fee. So if there's a credit there, you, you'll probably want to go and, and maybe offer that credit to your client or not, depending on what your agreement is with them. Uh, we've also got a, a thing, a, a billable warning showing you that there's a zero dollar device. And this may be because, again, it's, it's, off of, it's not reporting any detail. Uh, maybe there is some credit amount as well owing on there that, that had it equal zero. Uh, it might also be, though, that this is a device that's just been brought on but isn't reporting anything yet and Xerox isn't charging you the base fee. So we're, we're trying to provide you with some of these details. And the last one is my favorite, which is the loss, which is that, that this device here um, is in a loss situation where you're where we've calculated that you're losing money on it, um, and that's the most telltale one that maybe something's not quite quite right. 
All right, so with the, uh, we've, we've reviewed this warnings uh, uh, document. That's great. Uh, I'm going to go and cl I'll close out here. And um, the next screen that appears gives me the ability to actually send the invoices or not. So if I looked at that warnings report and I thought, no, things aren't right here, I'm going to go back and do a little bit of research and you know, clean some things up and then maybe re-import the file because there was something wrong from Xerox and they sent me a new one. Who knows what the situation is? Um, when I'm finally ready to run the invoice run, I simply go ahead and click yes, and um, it sends the invoices. In this case here, we're sending them to, uh, to QuickBooks Online, but again, this could be desktop, Sage desktop, and away we go. So we successfully sent those off to QuickBooks, and we actually get another report from Click. And this will look very similar to that last report we reviewed, but it'll have things like invoice numbers and show us that the invoices were successfully created. So I'm gonna go ahead and click yes, I'd like to open this report. And in QuickBooks, so, sorry, and in, uh, and in uh, Excel, I'm seeing now the invoice number in QuickBooks. I'm also seeing a success message and those other details that, uh, that are there. So quick way for you to reference back, um, you know, what customer was on what, uh, what invoice and uh, to, to ensure that everything was successfully, successfully created. What I'll do now is I'll actually open up uh, QuickBooks and we'll take a look at, at that. All right, so I'm going to open up QuickBooks right now. As I say, we're on QuickBooks Online. I've just got it open up down here. We're in a very a test environment that uh, the guys at, uh, at Intuit uh, provide us. I'm going to simply go click on Customers. And, and again, it, you know, we connect to these different accounting systems. So uh, your accounting system might look a little different, uh, but this will give you a, you know, a, a general, uh, general view of, of how this all works. Actually, I should be clicking on transactions here because I'm looking for a sales transaction. And these will be the, the last transactions that were sent into the system. So I can see it's a transaction uh, dated today. It's great. I will go ahead and uh, open it up. And um, here we see all the data that we've added into the system. So we had it set to do asset fees per device. So we're seeing the device details. And this is all based on that layout that we saw when we first started in the uh, configuration section. So I'm seeing manufacturer, um, the uh, model of the device, the serial number of the device, and also the location, if there's a location specified in the, uh, in the Xerox file. There wasn't, obviously, for this device. We're also showing you uh, the product or service. This is that GL code, the revenue code. And we're showing a description. In the description block, we're putting in the, the, uh, the meter read dates. We're putting in what the meter reads were. And we're actually showing you the asset fee here. And we're showing any of the quantities of pages and that rate. If this were a device where we had um, uh, included uh, pages, we had uh, $50 in uh, base fee, or, uh, and we had included 1,000 monochrome pages, we'd actually see that detail on here, along with any overage charges if there were. And the overage charge would be whatever that, uh, that rate is that you've prescribed. Uh, I had the separator set. So there's just purely some dotted lines that appear here that just break up the individual devices. And so we can scroll down and see uh, the units that were there. Uh, there's a unit here that didn't have a page count associated with it, but it, uh, we are charging an asset fee uh, because it was, um, uh, it, it, it then passed our rules of what should be billed and what shouldn't. And we have some excellent documentation on how the application decides what's billable and what's not billable. And that's been vetted by you know, a number of, our, uh, number of our users out there. So we're, we're confident in those rules, but if they don't meet up for you, let us know. Well, we can certainly make, uh, make alterations. And then uh, we can take a look at a print preview. Now, we haven't really configured this template, so this is the absolute base template that's inside of, uh, inside of QuickBooks. I think we picked the color, um, so it's red. The, um, it's simply populating this data. Now, you can go ahead and make this template look however you want, add your own logos to it, um, but it provides all that rich detail then for your, your client to see. And obviously, if we scroll down to the bottom, we're going to see the, uh, the amount owing. If we had multiple tax rates, we would see those appear. If we had a roll-up of, um, uh, of all these asset fees, instead of them being per device, but being uh, set as a, as a summary at the bottom, you'd see those broken apart by tax rate as well. So we're handling all of those aspects of the application. Uh, from here, I could either print these invoices out, or I can email them en masse to, uh, to my clients. And, and away we go. So what we've shown you is how we first import uh, the, the data. This, it, this took the better part of maybe 15, 20 minutes to go through from end to end to show you how we link up Click 
with your data, um, first run sort of things. Now what we're going to do is we're going to show you in real time what it would take you each month to import your data and run it through Click. And you'll see, you know, if, if it's taking you anywhere from a few hours to a few days every month, that that's going to be reduced significantly down to literally a few minutes. So I'd go ahead and just do the complete run through in real time and we'll see how long it takes. Sure. So yeah, normally you'd, uh, you'd get your invoice from Xerox. Uh, maybe I open it up to take a quick peek at it, see it looks okay, great. I'm gonna go ahead and import it. And what I've got here is I've got a new file that has two additional devices. So I added two devices last month. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, select that file. I'm gonna call this one, let's call this one February. And I'm gonna go ahead and upload it. It's 38 rows, so there are two additional rows of data. If I go over to devices now, I will, it's easy to find those devices because I could simply click on my verified here and I could sort and I'm gonna find, there's two new devices that haven't been verified because they don't have any detail. Now, I might open this device up and see that, oh, it's this client. Okay, I'm gonna go find another device that's associated with that client and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, select that device. Maybe I'll do both of them here because I know they're both from the same client. I'll go ahead and click my, uh, my copy and clone and I can say, yeah, you know what? This client's being billed those same amounts for these devices and yep, that's the client name there and yep, they're tax exempt. I'm, I'm okay with these values. Go ahead and click okay and uh, I've set those, uh, those units up. Now, uh, I'm gonna go over to my uh, invoicing page here and I will simply go and select that one to my February run and I wanna hit process. And it's gonna give me the same reports that we saw before. Uh, we've got two device warnings and two invoices. I won't bother to open them up. Uh, we're okay with those. I'm gonna say there's now 38 devices on two invoices. Click yes. And wait for those invoices to be sent up. Great, they've been sent up. Uh, here's my confirmation report that we've already seen. I would now go into QuickBooks. I would go highlight those invoices and I'd go and uh, release them as a batch run uh, to be emailed. So it, it could literally be a couple of minutes. Uh, likely what you'll do is you'll open them up in your accounting system. You'll take a quick look. You'll probably have a few warnings. If you have any you know, size, you've got 100 devices, you're gonna have a few warnings and you might wanna deal with those. Uh, but, uh, but the process uh, to suggest that it's, Shrunken time from what you're likely doing today is probably the understatement, uh, and uh, and away we go. I timed that, and and even to add a little bit of buffer in there, you were easily under two minutes. In fact, you were you were just over about uh, a minute and thirty five. Right. So, uh, probably probably not realistic out there, but yeah. I think we could we could easily say, and and I can tell from what we've seen out there, uh, clients who have hundreds, if not over a thousand devices, are spending hours using the product and not days using the product. Right. Uh, so it's a process that you can get done. I, and maybe the best way to describe it is in one sitting. You can sit down with a cup of coffee and get the invoicing done. Uh, and that means you're going to get paid faster, obviously, and get this, uh, this, uh, this task off of your, off your list. I, I would like to show a couple other quick things, though, that we didn't talk about. Um, you know, when we're in modifying these devices and updating, the question always comes up about, I, you know, I need to uplift these things by X percent every year. And, and I alluded to this ability to have um, an annual reminder. I'll actually just enable this to show you what this does. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. If I go back to devices, I see now uh, that I have a new column called reminder. All of them have a check mark by them right now. In fact, except for one, uh, and I know of this from our test data. Um, it's because we take whatever the, whatever the start date is of that device, and we kind of add a year to it, less a month to it. So most of these units, I go pull them up, and I have a new piece down here, next reminder date. So this device's start date was the middle of uh, December of 2015. So we're gonna remind you on the anniversary of that less one month. So on the 1st um, of, uh, of November, a red flag is going to appear to show you that this device is set to be uh, uplifted. And then you can choose to do that, that invoice run or a future invoice run. We're looking to automate this process, but in the meantime, we're at least flagging these so that you can go ahead and, and make those adjustments. Uh, this unit here is flagged because uh, its next reminder date uh, is actually, has actually passed um, because it's, it's set it to next year, less a month, and we're past that date, so it's flagged it for us. 
So I could maybe go in here and say, yep, yeah, this customer now needs to be uplifted by, a, by an amount. Uh, I go ahead and I set those. Well, it's giving me this warning again, saying that uh, some of these values are greater than others. You know, that's okay. Uh, we're charging the locks for this device. And once that's been done, I simply click on this. And now what it's done is it's moved the reminder date to the, uh, to the next year. Doug, did we get a feature request from a customer to asking for that to be done automatically by a certain percentage? Yeah, so, yeah, and, and our, our interim fix, and again, because we're taking all these suggestions from the field and we're trying to drive them out as fast as we can, the, the, the initial request was, can, you, can I just give you a percentage and you just uplift my devices on a specific date and time yeah. uh, to that percentage? And our response back was yes, but that's gonna require quite a bit of effort on our part. What if in the short term, we give you a reminder? And the response was, you know, that'd be great. Uh, if you can get me that much, then at least I can continue on and, um, and not be you know, concerned that I'm not billing somebody enough for a device because there has been an uplift from, from, uh, uh, from Xerox. So that, pro that project is actually in the works right now uh, to go ahead and inside of every device uh, or en masse to be able to say, this, this device gets an uplift and it's these fields that do and it's by this percentage and it's either on the anniversary or alternatively it's, um, it's uh, on a specific date because maybe you uplift everybody on January 1. And so that, that feature uh, will, will be in there and that's gonna automate this even further, especially for those who have large fleets who, uh, who may spend 15 minutes just doing the, up, the updates when they uh, power the application. We're trying to cut that right down in, in a dream world, we'd actually get it to a state where uh, you just simply bring the invoice run in and hit go. Um, you know, but there's probably some checks and balances in there that you want to do. And so we're trying to either automate as much as possible, um, but still provide you with the feedback so you can go in and verify and confirm that that's, that's correct. Yeah, we're, we're really trying to minimize the human intervention or the manual intervention that's required. But as you say, that's, there's always going to be some level um, that, that, that is going to be required for checks and balances. Definitely. Yeah. Um, maybe the last button on this screen here uh, is uh, the ability to export these devices. So if what you'd like is just an Excel spreadsheet to see all the detail, you can simply click this and uh, we'll generate a report showing all this, showing them the reminder dates are. Uh, so if you want to do things kind of off in Excel, kind of confirm what you've got going on there and then come over here and, um, and make those updates. And we provided that ability. And, and as I did mention, I, I mentioned this really in passing at the very start, but I, I'll come on to this. Those with larger fleets tend to be adding more devices on a monthly basis. And sometimes they don't want to actually deal with the devices all at once when the invoice comes in. So what they're doing is clicking the add button. And as a new device is, um, as a, as a new device is brought, on, um, brought online for a client, prior to it hitting the Xerox invoice, they're going in here and keying in the manufacturer's serial number. You can put the Xerox serial number in, but we don't recommend it because we want you to put the manufacturer's serial number in. It might be an HP device or something else where we're gonna bind this up later. So you'd key in whatever the manufacturer's serial number happens to be, any of the details about the device, even who the client is, and uh, click OK. Um, we're gonna get a, ver a verification error here because we haven't put in an asset fee or a black and white fee. Um, it wants either a value or zero for that matter. I'll click OK. I've added this device. What will happen, it's got a little warning by it because, uh, because it knows that it hasn't been linked up to anything. The next invoice run I get from Xerox, if there's a device with a manufacturer's serial number of one, two, three, four, five, then what'll happen is it'll link to this. It'll then pr it'll populate the Xerox serial number and uh, you'll also see the Xerox customer value appear down here and obviously the device start date. So we wire that up uh, on the fly. So you can get a, a jump on getting all the other values in, the asset fees, the black and white fees, and, uh, and other details. You can do that on a monthly basis, and then that'll limit, uh, eliminate some time on the, uh, on the import. And that's, uh, I think, about it, unless there's any other questions that, uh, that are out there. No, um, there is a question about pricing, but I held off because I think we're gonna get to that next. Um, so maybe let's talk a little bit about how we price click so our pricing is based on the number of devices that you have under management, and it varies considerably. It is essentially volume-based pricing. What we've done, though, is we've established a minimum price, and that is with 250 devices or less, the cost is going to be $100 Canadian dollars per month. 
okay? Once you go beyond 250 devices, as those numbers of de uh, devices under management increases, um, the cost per device comes down. But there is um, that point of delineation between 250 and less devices and 250 or more. So because everybody has a different number of devices under management, uh, we would encourage you to, to reach out to us if you want a specific quote on um, for your number of devices. We're more than happy to, to talk to you about that, figure out what your monthly cost would be. We don't sell the software outright. Uh, it is not a type of software where it's canned and you can just buy it, install it, and, and run. And, and the reason is, there's multiple reasons, but um, because we, we, we chose this method uh, of calculating it basis, based on the devices under management, um, we went with the, the per month cost. Um, some of the questions that have come in, Doug, uh, sort of all dovetail nicely um, into this. And people want to know, okay, what's included for the cost? So maybe you could talk a little bit about uh, support, uh, software updates, whether those software updates are automatically applied, things like that to, to answer some of these questions. You know, Todd's right. It's a subscription-based product. So, um, so you, you get the product, you can install it on, on your system, and, um, and as part of that monthly fee, you get automatic updates. So if the next time you power the product up, if we've got a new update, and right now we've got an update uh, almost monthly uh, with new features and, and functionality, uh, then, then you have the choice to uh, install that update uh, or not at that point in time. You may decide that, look, you know what, I want to get through this invoice run, and then I'll try the new version. I'll make sure that the new features work the way I want them to, and then you can go ahead and apply that, uh, that patch. But it simply pops up every time you run, uh, and there's a new version uh, that, that's out there. So that's part of it. Um, the other part is, uh, is the onboarding piece. So we went through kind of an exhaustive process in, you know, uh, adding these devices and clicking on each one and telling it what it's, you know, it's uh, charges to the client. Likely you already have some of this in an Excel spreadsheet somewhere. So as part of our onboarding process is you just send that to us and we actually configure an initial system for you. We do the import of that data for you and we, and we uh, come and install the product, which takes minutes to install and um, with, with a data set that's, that's yours live, ready to go. Uh, so that the next invoice run you've got, you can import and start uh, start invoicing. Uh, but once we've installed it, then we do a bit of configuration. That takes a bit of time, making sure that we have our invoice layout correct, that we've connected to your accounting system uh, properly. And uh, we do all that with you uh, through a remote session. And uh, we hold your hand through that. Uh, and to, to add to that, uh, your, four, your first couple of runs, your first couple of production runs, we offer the, uh, the, uh, the ability to, uh, to sort of sit by your side and, uh, and go through it with you. It's, it's not a piece of software you're gonna use every day. And so we recognize that customers sometimes forget how things work 30 days later. Uh, so what we'll do is you give us a little bit of heads up and we will make arrangements to remotely log in with you uh, on a day that you're gonna do one of your production runs. We'll, you'll drive, we'll watch, and we'll, we'll guide you through it. And uh, you can take as many notes as you, if you, as you want. We can record the session and provide it to you so you've got your own personal uh, personal tutorial, and uh, you'll import the run, you'll update some devices, you'll run the invoice, uh, you'll log us into your accounting system, and we'll work with you to make sure it looks right, uh, and then ultimately release off to your client. And if you want us to do that for a couple of months, uh, we're, we're happy to help out. Uh, we're here uh, to provide you with that, uh, that, that support on uh, an ongoing basis. So that concludes our, our webinar and our demo of uh, Click for XPPS invoicing. Uh, there's no other questions at this time, so we'll thank everybody for attending. Uh, if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can send us an email to info at XP, xppsinvoicing.com. Uh, also have a look at our website under xppsinvoicing.com. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks very much for attending.